Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a self-playing piano effect only using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. This effect comes from one of my previous videos, which you can check out up here. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So the first step we're going to do is to drag the video into the timeline and I'm going to remove the audio and by doing so you can hold down Control shift l and then you deselect this linking section so you can just remove the audio without removing the video. So this is going to be the start point of the video so I'm going to press B on the keyboard to slice and then press A to select the selection mode and to move this section to the beginning of the timeline I can just pick everything prior to this point and press shift delete and and uh, I'm just gonna scroll to the end of this motion and do the same thing, press B, slice, press A, and then remove everything after this point. In my case, if we hover over met metadata, you can see that this video was shot in 60 frames or 59.94 frames per second. So um, I can slow it down. And by doing so, I can press Ctrl R and then press this tab and then change the speed to 50%. So, we're done here. Let's move to the Fusion tab. Now, before you do anything, it's super important to move to the first frame of this segment because we're gonna keyframe a lot and it's important that we start from the beginning. Okay, first, you're gonna pick the media in and you can do the uh, and you can duplicate it by hitting control copy control v but i'm just gonna open the select toolbar and you do that by pressing shift spacebar then you search for media in here we go and uh, to keep everything tidy and uh, in order i'm just gonna press f2 on the keyboard and now we can change name so i'm just gonna call it uh, key one because this is gonna be the first key of the piano we're gonna animate. Then what we need to do is to add a mask and I can hover over this and select polygon. So let's just say I wanna animate this key, for instance. So let's start adding points and uh, be sure to do this as uh, thoroughly and as precise as possible because you're gonna notice if it's not done correctly. I think we are done. The next step is to add a merge node, okay? So you press uh, shift spacebar and then search merge. Here we go. Now, this is super important. This key needs to be uh, the background of this uh, merge node. And I can explain later, but first you just press background and then you drag this to foreground and the output to media out. Okay, I can just remove first this uh, ground layer and then we can add the polygon to see the effect. Okay, now you can see and it's okay that you see a bit of the key or if you're if you're super <laughs> precise, we can drag it in just to, yeah, we get the point. And the effect, how it works is that um, we're gonna duplicate this polygon. Okay, so I can just hit Control copy then Control v and then we have the exact duplicate of the mask and then you can add this mask to the media in. Okay, but we want to invert this mask so everything else is visible on the ground layer. So turn to this page and you can see here it says invert and you just press that. Bam! Well, where's the key you say? Well, the effect is visible only if we move this key and to do that we can add a transform okay transform hit enter and then move over here and hold down shift to add it still it's the same but as soon as you select transform and drag you should see the effect and if we turn back to the edit page you see we get the black background also super cool um okay let's turn back to the fusion tab um so that's the effect but you see if we just drag it down again, and if I hit enter, you lose the effect as soon as you press enter. So this effect can only be applied to this frame. So how do we solve that? Well, you're, you're gonna need to keyframe every single frame, but a tip is to add keyframes in the beginning, in the end, and then in the middle, and then you just add keyframes between these points. So you have in the distance. And by doing so, you're not forced to create a keyframe on every single frame 
because the computer is going to calculate how the keyframe is supposed to move accordingly to the other ones. Okay, so let's move back to the first frame. Okay, and uh, let's just select this one. Wait, just go move back to transform and press reset. So we move back to the initial position. Let's press polygon and let's move this up a bit. Okay, so well, then you might ask yourself, I want to add more keyframes. How do you do that? Well, same principle. You're just going to add this node tree, press control copy, deselect everything, press control V. And now you have this tree and same thing, connect this to the foreground, connect the output to the media out. And now we have the second, oh, I'm not supposed to have that animated yet. Okay. So now we're going to add the second key. So, well, you just uh, pick one. Let's say this one, it looks nice. So let's drag our previous mask to that position. This effect only works if you do small movements. And if you want to do crazy things like 360 degrees, then you need to 3D model and 3D animate the keyboard. And I'm going to do a future video showing that. So stay tuned. Um, okay, I think we should be done. All right. Wait, my OCD is kicking in. It needs to be perfect. Okay. Yeah, I think that should do it. Same thing. If we want to see how the mask is going, we can just press one on the keyboard and see. Yes, everything's looking good. Press one again. Now, before I start duplicating masks and things like that, I'm just going to press initial mask and press F2 on the keyboard. And now you can rename this node. So I'm just going to name it mask one and this is going to be mask two so same thing select this one and press f2 and then type in mask two and this one should be renamed to key two okay same thing we're going to duplicate wait let's just remove this one and duplicate mask one okay control copy control v control copy control v oops sorry there we go. And uh, you might say, well, let's just connect these together. Bam and bam. And then you invert it and you invert that one and ev everything should work fine, right? And if we move, nothing's happening. So as soon as you add more keys to this animation, you're going to do it a bit differently. So let's just move into mask two and invert mask two and deselect the invert. Okay. And deselect everything. Before you can add this, you're going to need a mat control, okay? And uh, you're going to plug in these two masks to the background. Whoop, bam. And if you press the mat control and press one, you can see this effect that we want. But now we have selected only the keys. We want to select everything, the whole piano and not the keys. Press mat control, move over to this tab and then invert mat. Now you see that everything is selected except these keys. So now we can connect the mat control to the initial media in. And uh, if we select, for instance, the first key, transform and move it down, it's working super fine. And the next one, you will move it down. Bam, it just works. And if we move over to the edit tab, we can see it looks quite well. All right, but as I said before, this effect only works on this frame. So <sighs> this is the difficult part of this effect. You're gonna need to animate it all the way through. First of all, move to the transform node and press reset to move it back. Transform and press reset. Okay, so let's begin. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna animate this mask, this mask, so the keyframes follow the piano when it moves and we're going to remove these two because these aren't animated. So after we have keyframed these two, we're going to duplicate them again and then add them to the mat control and then you get the effect. So let's begin. Okay. Now everything is keyframed and it should look good. So let's just connect this mask to the key one and the mask two to key two. And as I said before, we're just gonna duplicate these two. Press control copy and control V 
I'm just gonna connect that one again. And let's just drag this to the mat control. Now, uh, the fun part begins. You can just grab the transform node and drag it down. Same thing with the tr second transform and drag it down. This part is up to you how you want to animate the keys. One thing that is important when you're animating the keys is that you can't drag the keys more than its initial position like this because then you lose the effect. Okay, I'm not going to show you anymore but you get the idea and if I turn back to the edit tab the animation is running super smoothly and it's looking great. So yeah, there you go.